guys, welcome back to Sager. Today we have a really special guest from Australia, Lee, that is going to talk about uh, his project and how it started. So can you talk, uh, Lee, a little bit more about yourself first? Uh, so can you present yourself and then tell us about your company and what you do? Hello, my name's Lee Capel and I am the owner of Bella Pock Fine Art and Antiques in Sydney. Uh, we specialise in pretty much art antiques, but we're going more towards fine art. So we have a large collection of paintings that I've collected over the last five or so years. Uh, about two and a half thousand paintings and about 500 years worth of art. So we have works from all over the world and that's what we specialise in. And being in Sydney, we are quite unique. Great. So how did you start your career? Did you study something that was related to art or anyone can really open their own art gallery? So my journey in art was quite strange because at high school, I never studied art at all. I was a sportsman, so I never had any interest in art. I would go to art galleries because my mother was an artist but I never thought that I would be an artist. I wanted to be an architect. And after I studied architecture for a couple of years, I decided I wanted to become a filmmaker. So I studied for three years to be a filmmaker, including in San Francisco. And, and then I went to move to London and I worked in London as um, a, a camera engineer for the London Olympics. And when I moved home after six months, I didn't have a job. So my mother, who at the time had become an antiques dealer, she got me a job at a local auction room. So I was cleaning tables, moving furniture. And so I really didn't have much um, interest in doing anything, just doing manual labor, logistics. So what I did after that, about six months working in this auction room, they found out that I had a degree in art, uh, sorry, in photography and film. So they wanted me to take photographs of the art, the paintings. And so I wasn't very happy about that, but every day I would take photos of about 100, 200, 300, sometimes 500 paintings a day until I um, started to understand what is a good painting and what's a bad painting. So I started to understand quality. And so I started to collect paintings just out of joy of having these paintings around me, not because I knew what they were, and then eventually I was able to progress through the business and become their art valuer. So I was able to value the art that um, came through the doors. And then from there, I moved up not from, from this small company to another company called Menzies, which uh, is one of the largest art dealers in Australia. And then I finally Sotheby's a couple of years ago. So I was working at Sotheby's and we did um, some very major auctions such as uh, the Russell Crowe memorabilia auction um, the actor and uh, the Kirk Pengilly, he's the guitarist for uh, In Excess, his collection. And, um, and then from there, I decided to open my own gallery because I felt I'd been collecting paintings through this entire process. And I had amassed about 2000 of my own paintings that I owned. And that was um, something that just bought me, it was a hobby and I didn't believe that it would be much of a, a job until I realized that I had enough that I could open my own gallery and start putting on exhibitions of mostly deceased artists. So, um, but but these artists were quite reputable and quite um, well known. So, I would collect art from all over the world, including Italy, and um, they would be um, respected artists. And 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 down here, there are Italians, there are people from all different countries because Sydney is quite multicultural. So, we um, find those people in Sydney so we can sell those paintings to people from those countries and okay. now and so this year we, we've decided to move further into um, exhibiting contemporary artists as well okay so how do you select your artists right now and what's your specialization basically right now so you you said that you are going into uh, modern art basically so how do you select them how do you get to know the painter and also um, any suggestions of, to people who would like to start the art gallery, how they should be doing, what they could do to, to start, or any, any suggestion that you have, any advice? So, uh, 
a good way to start your own art galleries, to start collecting, but most importantly, start to educate yourself. As I said, I never studied art at high school or at university. So what I did is I read books. I used to collect books and read books and visit art galleries out there. So it could be public art galleries. Um, there's quite a few great ones in Italy, of course, um, you know, in Florence and in, in Venice, there's some brilliant, and especially Rome. So there's lots of different galleries around public galleries, but also private galleries. And you get to see uh, the, the value of, of how much uh, paintings will sell for but most importantly the best places to buy are auction rooms so uh, basically these are uh, big auction houses that sell uh, everything they sell furniture they sell art they sell jewelry they sell pretty much anything you can think of and they come from people who most of the time who are have passed away and families just need to get rid of these paintings or furniture and you get it at a much reduced price. It's sort of like eBay, but a physical form of eBay. And I, that's how I started buying. I would buy artworks for $20, $30, $30 um, Australian dollars. So that's about 15 euro, 30 euro. And eventually my budget got higher, the quality of my art got higher, and I started to create this collection. And anyone can do it. And if you know what you like, because the most important thing, if you want to be a good dealer, you have to buy what you like because if you want to sell these artworks, you have to be able to justify their worth. So if you're selling an artwork, if you buy an artwork for 50 euro, um, you can sell that artwork for 3000 euro. If you know how to justify or if you uh, justify the piece or educate the buyer that it's a good investment because most likely a lot of these artworks don't have a story behind them and that is your job to create that story. And that comes from your research, your education, and um, your passion. So basically you research the artist's history and then you tell the history behind the art to the potential buyer. And then they, they might be getting interest into that because at the beginning, they just like the art visually, but then they get the interest of the history behind basically. Okay. Absolutely. So, That's the best. Okay, so what's your favorite painter? Because mine is Salvador Dali, and I know that you have some. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And also, who, who's your favorite artist? Okay, um, yes, uh, well, Salvador Dali, I, uh, he was quite a prolific artist, and most people know Salvador Dali, especially in Europe. Um, he's a very famous artist, and as a famous artist, he used to produce a lot of work. So. Um, there, is, there is a lot of artwork that is in Europe that has ended up all the way down here in Australia, purely because uh, people around World War II, immigrants would come to Australia after the war to start a new life. And so they'd bring their collections down to Australia and that means they'd bring European art, which means they'd bring Dali. And so um, we at, at uh, Bella Poc, we have two original Dali works. One is a, a signed etching, which he used to do quite a lot of. But the other work we have is a signed woodcut and that was done about 1960. But what Dali used to do when he was bored was he used to uh, draw on his woodcuts just to pass time. And he drew on my woodcut, he drew uh, uh, what's called the anthropomorphic woman, which was one of his most famous uh, images of a woman uh, with drawers coming out of her uh, body. And it's symbol. It's a symbol of the work of Freud and and the the depth of a woman's psyche and uh, the psychology of a woman. And so I find that it is fascinating. And um, anyway, so they're the two that I came across. But that Dali in particular, it was because I knew more about the artist than everyone else around me who was uh, bidding in auction for that. They didn't realise that this had been this pen drawing had been added onto the print. So it was because of my knowledge that I had learnt to look closely at a print that I was able to distinguish that this was not only a woodcut, which is valuable in itself, but it was a woodcut and embellished with an ink drawing, which makes it tenfold. It's worth a lot of money, and as most original Dalis are. Um, but as for uh, my favourite painter, I would say you probably haven't heard of him, but he's a, an Australian artist called Sir William Dobell. And he was, uh, he did portraits and he did uh, 
really interesting works around the 1930s to about 1970 when he died. Um, if there was a person I'd like to paint my portrait, it would be him because he won. There's a very important portrait prize in Australia that he won. Um, and he did a very controversial uh, artwork one year and it created a whole stir. So he was he's one of my favorites. I do have um, two or three of his original works, but not a major work, which I eventually hope to uh, acquire. Okay, now uh, a little bit of a different question. So when you come across this amazing painting, don't you want to keep it for yourself? Because <laughs> like selling them, it's so difficult sometimes. If I get crossed with uh, Dali, I would never sell it to anyone. Yeah, look, it's in in essence when it comes to material things. Like I'm in the the business of selling things that are, are goods, and then then they're not necessities. They're they're basically luxuries. So. When I first started collecting, it was like that. I was collecting things that I liked and I really wanted to hold on to and keep. But out of the two and a half thousand works that I have, I probably only want to keep about 20 of them. And that attachment to those goods is the hardest thing to overcome for an, a collector, especially early in their, in their career, especially for a dealer, because as a dealer, everything technically is for sale. But um, what you realize is that a painting that's worth five dollars can be worth to you as much as a painting five million dollars it's something that um, i learned um, very quickly and so i'm not attached to any particular item because life is about experiences generally generally so i'd prefer to spend money on friends and family and and travel and i think there's a lot more things that you can spend money on but if you are a smart person and you find a, an artwork which gives you an emotional connection it can um create a, mem uh, a memory uh, a memory, or a, a, it can be sentimental in some way, it can be related to your family, it could be just something that livens your interior. Uh, art can do so much of that, but in, in, a, in a whole, um, art is just a, a, a luxury and we're very lucky to be able to have art here. And it brings me a lot of joy, but it's only um, a passing thing in our lives because there's so many more important things, but it does bring you joy daily. And people's tastes change as well. So people who like that, what I liked five years ago is completely different to what I like now. And I think that's in general with most creative um, pursuits, that's generally what happens in people's lives, taste change. Okay, uh, what about the virus? So, so did that impact you? And also like, do you have also the your online collection? I mean, people can buy from your, you, do you have an online store as well or only a physical one? Yeah, well, our, um, due to uh, our, the current uh, situation with COVID um, and the pandemic, what we've done is we've tried to uh, think outside the box because a lot of different industries around the world have been suffering. And as an art industry, we specialize in selling images. So the best way to do that is through social media. And so we bolstered our Instagram, which is very big, and I update it two or three times a day with new, new stock or works that I've sold or anything art related, I'll, I'll update people on. Um, but also uh, with our Facebook and we have a very good website which has pretty much everything on it. And um, that way people can have, uh, we want to make it easy for people to, to, to navigate and understand what they like about art because a lot of people, probably 95% of people don't know what they like. And so we want to try and make people feel uh, like they can understand art, that it's accessible to people. Instead of going and buying an a, a, a expensive artist's poster uh, from a poster shop and getting it framed for $500 or 200 or 300 euro, you can buy an original work for less than that. Even if it's not a famous artist, it has the same quality. So I want to educate young people that anyone can buy. And so in this um, pandemic, we've been very successful because people have been at home looking at their empty walls. They can't spend money on eating out. They can't spend money on traveling. So a steady investment to put money in that brings you daily joy is art. So that's what has been so great for us because um, people are starting to understand that, uh, that it is a good investment in the long term and even, even in the short term, but it's an ongoing enjoyment. 
Absolutely. And also this, uh, let's say, the art uh, world, it's a little bit considered sometimes uh, uh, something that uh, mainly old people do, right? So you're very young. So how do you deal with that? You have like, a, I don't know, you go into antique shops and maybe people treat you like that you know nothing about art, but then you are an expert of it. So how do you do, deal with that? Actually, is something that is a powerful thing for you or is something that um, is difficult for you to deal with? Look, in Sydney, it is easy now because it's been a few years of me working in the industry, so people know who I am. When I when I go to antique stores or when I go to auction rooms, people actually follow me around to see what I'm looking at, to see, oh, see if he knows it's what it is or if he is interested in it, that must be a good thing. So in Sydney and, and some, and even in Melbourne and in Brisbane, in, in Australian cities, people know who I am. But in general, if I'm overseas, and it's happened many times where I've, I've gotten into um, arguments in galleries because um, I will show up and they just think, you know, oh, this young bloke, he doesn't know anything about art. Or why is he here? Or what, why is he asking these questions? Um, that is, it is tough, but in a way, what you do, you show them your knowledge, you show them your passion. You don't boast, but you engage them in discussion. And once they, talk with you, they'll understand uh, my passion for art, but also understand my knowledge. And that's a way that I'm able to demonstrate that I'm not just a, a young person who knows nothing about art because all of my competitors generally working in doing uh, similar things to what we do um, are double my age. So I'm 32 and everyone who, all my competitors are in their 60s. So that's just generally, um, like you say, it's a tough thing to do, but it has come in handy. For example, um, a couple of years ago, I decided to go to the auction in Christie's in New York, um, which was the Leonardo da Vinci auction. And I was the only Australian in the room. I was able to talk my way into the room. And so I saw this Salvador Mundi sell for 450 million US dollars. And it was a very historic moment, but I wasn't supposed to be there, but I was able to discuss with the, uh, the staff and I was able to uh, charm them into allowing me to be in the room. And my friend who worked at a television station here in, in Australia, in one of the big networks, she messaged me uh, and asked me to come on live television and be the person who reported from the auction and that was great because I was on national television talking about this Da Vinci auction and um, that's the benefits of it I think because with young people in the industry uh, we just have a bit more passion and drive and we can take more risks and um, and and also we have more access to information using internet whereas the older generation aren't as good at as utilizing the internet. Okay so technology comes to hand right absolutely okay thank you so much lee and uh, okay any suggestions any advice or three advice to people who like to open their own heart gallery where to start and how to start okay the easiest way to start an art gallery is start buying paintings and that means buying paintings that you feel uh, you have a connection to it can be five dollars it can be five hundred dollars it doesn't matter so the best way to do it is start small and buy uh, a number of works and then find uh, outlets that you can sell it so you might not have a gallery to begin with but there are sites like ebay or there are sites that you can put them on or start a website and start an instagram site and put these paintings or sculpture or whatever you choose to sell on these sites and gradually market yourself and as soon as you know what you like selling you will know what type of art that you uh, can sell and justify to people the value and that's what I've done I've decided that I am very good at selling mid-century art um, abstract art and at the moment I've got a Japanese exhibition so I'm very good at selling Japanese art but that doesn't mean that I don't sell other things so um, I'm very if, another thing is be open to um, buying different styles of art because 
Art is subjective. Everyone likes different things. And so if you get the broadest possible range in, in what you buy, you will have the broadest possible audience because everyone likes different things. And that's the best ex uh, way I can um, give advice on how to start a gallery. And then it will grow from there. I think online is the way that the art industry is moving. So having a gallery, a physical spot isn't as important. And so what I'm doing to manage that is I'm opening up my gallery to rent out to contemporary artists, but also to do art classes, life drawing classes, every sort of thing, uh, ceramic classes, everything that I can do to make art more fun and an activity for people. So that's how I've uh, diversified my original business, which was just selling art. Now it's starting to grow into new areas um, in different at atmospheres and doing um, selling art in all different uh, forms and events. Okay, so thank you so much, Leah. I think you have been amazing. You have given us so many information. So we'll leave all uh, your details down below in the description box, all your social media, your, your email, if anyone wants to have a look at what you're doing and following you around the world, because you are also like when you're traveling, I imagine that you take the advantage of like actually buying something from another country and take it with you. So thank you so much guys for watching this uh, interview with Lee and, and see you soon. Bye!